Hi, Alvaro. I know you focus on DevOps and site reliability engineering. So I have a question for you. If deploying code to serverless like Cloud Run is so simple, do I even need a CI/CD pipeline? Hi, Martin. That's a good question. Let's find it out. When you start a new project, you have control for all over the project. However, when this project starts to grow up, it becomes more complex. For example, you might start with a monolithic application and then go to a microservice architecture. That's true. Not only can the system grow, uh, but also the team. Exactly. More team members means more changes to take care of. A CI/CD pipeline will help you to manage all that complexity and minimize that changes will block anything on your application. That's why you need a CI/CD pipeline. I see. And what would this CI/CD pipeline actually do, Alvaro? Okay. From the moment we commit the code to the repository until these changes appear to the final user, there are at least some steps that should be done. For example, build, store artifacts, and deploy. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, can we set up a CI/CD pipeline here to, to show all these steps? Sure. I had this web app sample from the Cloud Code Samples. It's written in Node.js, and I already pushed it to my own GitHub repository, so we can use it for the pipeline CI/CD. Great. And you said Node.js, Alvaro. Uh, what if I want to use another programming language? There, there are more samples in different languages on the Cloud Code repository on GitHub. You can go and find your preferred language. All right. So we have the code. It's checked out into source control. What's next? OK. We had one repository for the code. And now we need another kind of repository, a repository for artifacts. OK. And what kind of artifacts? What, what does it mean? An artifact could be a package, a library, or in our case, a container image, for example. In Google Cloud, we have artifact registry to store container images. Let me show you how can we create one. In the artifact registry section, click on the plus button to create a new repository. Let's use Node.js example for the name. And South America is one for the region. That region is located in Sao Paulo, Brazil which is to where I am. Then create and save the name because we're going to use it later. Perfect. We have one repository for the code in GitHub and one repository for the container images in Google Cloud. What's next? OK, with these repositories, now we can use Cloud Build. Cloud Build is a serverless platform that allows developers to create simple but powerful CI CD pipelines. The first thing to do is connect the GitHub repository to Cloud Build. Oh, I remember. I did that in an earlier video I shot with Aaron. Uh, I'll link to that video in the description below. Uh, I will do those steps again with the GitHub repo you just showed me, Alvaro. In the Cloud Builds section, I click on Connect Repository. Then I select GitHub as a source. And Cloud Build will check our GitHub credentials. After the authentication, I will select the repository I want to connect to. In this case, uh, hello, Cloud Run. Perfect. The repo is connected. Good job. Now I will create a trigger. The trigger will make us start the CI CD pipeline. So in the console, click on Create a Trigger. Let's put Hello Cloud Run Pipeline for the name. And then choose again South America is one because it's my region. For event, I choose push to a branch to trigger the pipeline. In which repo? The one we just connected. And let's use the branch main for the pipeline. So to recap, we have put the code in a repo on GitHub. Then we connected that repo with Cloud Build. And now we're telling Cloud Build to trigger the CI CD pipeline every time we push to the main branch on GitHub. Back to you, Alvaro. Now it's time to tell CloudView what to do during the pipeline. And uh, this is where we define what happens in the build, store, and deploy steps that you mentioned before, right? That's right. In the configuration part, I choose Cloud Build Configuration File. This file will be located inside the repo as cloudbuild.yaml. This is a special file. As you mentioned, here we describe every step we want to do in the pipeline. 
at the end, I just gonna click on create. So now uh, you have to create this file in the repo, right? Yeah, I already cloned the repo on my computer, so we can create the file right now. In the clone build demo, I'm going to define the build step first. And that looks like Docker build, just like I would run it on my local machine. Uh, but the syntax is a little different. Actually, it's the same. It's just broken in different lines. We are telling Cloud Build to run Docker Build with some arguments. Um, by the way, the chi argument, which means the tag of the container, it's pretty long. This is because part of the tag has the path to the artifact registry repository we just created before. And why do we do that? Well, all the steps will run in a trusted environment inside Cloud Build. So it's harder for a bad actor to inject malicious code into the app while building. When Cloud Build finishes its work, this environment will disappear. So the container inside will disappear too. That's why we need a repository for our images. This long tag indicates where we are going to store the image. Got it. Uh, so that was the build step. Uh, the next step is store, right? Uh, but didn't we store the container already? Not yet. The container image is still inside the cloud build environment. We need to store it in a more permanent place. We will use the artifact registry repository for that. So, in the cloud build YAML file, we have to add the store step. This time, we are using the docker push command. We are almost done. Uh, looks like the final step in your list is deploy, and for that, I have a great candidate. Uh, we are building container images, and Cloud Run is a great way to run those in the cloud. That's correct. I'm going to deploy the application to Cloud Run. So, we add the gcloud command to deploy to Cloud Run in the cloud build file, with the same fields we use in the consult. All right. Now that we're all set, we can commit and push the code to the repo. And if everything is right, the pipeline should start working. Yep, you're right. Let me commit the code. Uh, push it to the branch main, and there we go. So let's go to the cloud build console to see what's happening. Uh, yeah, it's working. And we can see the logs. Here goes the building log, the storing logs, and the deploy logs. It's done. So if we go to the link of the cloud run service, we can check the application. Uh, let's go. Uh, it works. So, beleza, which means awesome in Portuguese. Beleza, indeed. Uh, and if we make any change in the code, we only need to commit and push the code again to GitHub, and Cloud Build will do the rest. But, but one quick question Is there a way to make this new release uh, show up for only some of our users, uh, like a Canary test release? Yep, Cloud Run has this feature out of the box. Let me show you how to add this step into our pipeline. On the deploy step, we can add the no traffic flag. So no traffic will be sent to this new release. Then we can add one more step. Let's call it Canary. In this step, we add the update service command to split the traffic to the latest revision. 50% of the traffic should work for testing purposes. In a real canary release, we might use 5% instead. I like that. Uh, can you change the main title on the site? Uh, so it'll be easier to see the difference between the new and the old version? Sure, good idea. In the index file, we can add hello from Brazil. Let's do it. And then commit and push. The pipeline started as expected. And in the CloudView console, we can see this new canary step and all these logs. All right, it's completed. Let me check the app. Let's refresh many times. Sometimes we see hello from Brazil, which is the canary release, and sometimes hello from Cloud Run, which is the old version. Thank you for showing us that this is done, Alvar. Uh, you know, I've been typing gcloud uh, commands manually in the terminal uh, to deploy my Cloud Run apps. I think I may go and add CICD pipelines for them now. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Martin. When you automate building and deployment steps with a CICD pipeline, you will free up time so you can focus more on new features. Yes, I want to spend less time with the infrastructure 
and more time adding features my users actually asked for. Thank you everyone for watching. You will find links to the repos and tools we talked about in the show notes. If you have any questions for Alvaro or me, or suggestions for future serverless topics, please enter them in the comments below. We read every single comment. Until next time!